and welcome back to Vintage Disney here on Brian Sings That Are Cool. The Golden Horseshoe Saloon, originally called Pecos Bill's Golden Horseshoe, has found its place in other Disney parks. But since its original's opening in 1955, it's offered guests a rootin' tootin' good time. So let's take a look back at Walt's pet project, a tribute to the wild, wild west, the Golden Horseshoe Saloon. The Golden Horseshoe is designed by Disney legend Harper Goff, who was best known for creating the first map of Disneyland, which featured the idea of a haunted house, which eventually became the fan favorite, the Haunted Mansion. The saloon's initial stage show, Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe Review, was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest-running musical of all time at 31 years, being beaten out in 2002 by The Fantastics, which ran for 42 years. Though it should be noted that Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe Review has had far more performances. 39,000 compared to 17,162 for The Fantastics. On July 13, 1955, three days before the historic opening of Disneyland, the Golden Horseshoe Saloon held its first event for Walt and his wife Lillian Disney's 30th anniversary with a private party. The party was contained to Frontierland, with the Mark Twain Riverboat being one of the highlights of the night. In the show, saloon owner Slewfoot Sue and her dance hall girls welcomed the audience with, Hello everybody, followed by humorous barroom songs like A Lady Has to Mind Her P's and Q's. In between the singing and dancing would be skits, with the show often being interrupted by comedian Wally Bogue playing Pecos Bill, singing a song of the same name that was made famous by the Sons of the Pioneers in Disney's feature, Melody Time. Bogue would also entertain crowds with his own brand of slapstick humor, squirt guns, a running gag of him spitting out teeth throughout his routine, and making balloon animals, which he called Bogaloons. On the night of the anniversary party, as Bogue fired off his cap guns, Walt leaned over the balcony and fired back with his finger pointed like a gun. People saw Walt, and the reaction from the crowd had Walt climbing down from the balcony and onto the stage, leaving his daughter Diane terrified that he'd fall. The crowd begged for a speech, but all Walt could do was stand there beaming. Lillian Disney figured she could get Walt off the stage, but she couldn't. He was so proud. With the entire Disney family on stage attempting to get Walt off the stage, the band started to play. Guests came up to dance with the girls, with famed ventriloquist Edgar Bergen dancing with Diane. Finally, a still grinning Walt was led off stage. Walt may have been proud, but part of these shenanigans may have been because he was very drunk, relying on his daughter Diane taking his keys and becoming his designated driver. What a night. One day before the big ribbon cutting ceremony of opening day, Walt held another private party at the Golden Horseshoe for corporate sponsors. No doubt the sponsors left happy. Just maybe not as happy as Walt did a couple days before. <laughs> Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe Review would change some of the acts to keep things fresh, but Wally Bogue's act was always a mainstay in the show. In fact, Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe Review was written by two of his performers, Bogue and, of course, Donald Novus, with music by Charles Levere and Tom Adair. Novus had worked with Bogue in Australia years before and was the one who suggested Bogue to Walt. Some of these songs would also be performed by Sioux City Sue, who was played by Betty Taylor. Betty Taylor was happy to stick with the review, but Bogue and Novus's replacement, Fulton Burley, teamed up for a few Disney projects, including the Enchanted Tiki Room, where Burley voiced Michael and Bogue voiced Jose, as well as writing the script for the attraction. Wally Bogue would even have parts in Disney classics like The Apps on My Professor, and was even up for the role of Tigger before Paul Winchell won out. On September 23, 1962, the review hit the small screen in an episode of Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, entitled The Golden Horseshoe Review. The episode was directed by Walt's son-in-law, Ron Miller, and featured Annette, original cast members Wally Bogue, Fulton Burley, and Betty Taylor, Ed Wynn, and Gene Sheldon, who you may recognize as Don Diego de la Vega's faithful mute servant, Bernardo in Disney's Zorro. Walt, of course, appeared as himself, and the episode was made to celebrate the 10,000th performance of Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe Review. 
It's the perfect alternative to those of us who never experienced the original review, which had its last showing on October 12, 1986, before being changed to the Golden Horseshoe Jamboree. That's the one I remember. Here's my mom back in the 80s at Walt Disney World being called up on stage. But it's the original Slewfoot Sue's Golden Horseshoe Review that lives on as an important part of the Disney Company's history. The show's legacy can't be understated. Comedian Steve Martin, who spent his formative years at the Disneyland Magic Shop, would later call Bogue his biggest influence. Bogue was such a draw that when the Diamond Horseshoe Review opened in Walt Disney World, he performed there a couple of years before returning to California and retiring in 1982. Betty Taylor, Fulton Burley, and Wally Bogue would go on to be honored as Disney legends in 1995. Wally Bogue died on June 3rd, 2011, at the age of 90. One day later, his friend and longtime partner at the Golden Horseshoe Review, Betty Taylor, passed away. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my look at the Golden Horseshoe Saloon. If you want to be kept up to date as to when I release a new video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you really want to be notified, hit that bell as well. I'm Brian, and I'll see you next time.